A lot of work goes into producing information like this. My colleague Mike Walter talked about that and the major takeaways of this research with Compton Tucker, a senior Earth scientist at NASA. What jumped out uh, of what was announced today for me is that the first six months of 2016 are warmer uh, than all of the other six months going all the way back to 1880. This is continuing our record after record after record of one year being hotter than the next from 2014 to 2015 and now 2016. And it looks like if these temperatures continue that 2016 will beat the record uh, which, is being, which is currently held by 2015. Now, I spend most of my time using satellite data where you collect observations of the Earth day after day, week after week, year after year, sometimes for tens of years, 30, 35 years. And then we process those data to understand the Earth as a coupled system. So when I see surface temperature data showing the same thing which we observe from satellites, this is unequivocal evidence that the Earth is warming, and it's warming because of the accumulation of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. So for the layman, what does this mean? What's the overall impact to this? Well, the, uh, what this means for the layman is we're going to have warmer winters and warmer summers. Now, the problem with warmer conditions is in many areas, you may have more droughts, you may have more forest fires. In places like the Arctic or the far north, you will melt ice. This could be sea ice or it could be ice in the form of the Greenland ice cap or ice sheet. And so this is important for sea level rise. But what we're able to do with satellite data and aircraft data is study the Earth as an integrated system, understand where things are changing and why they are changing. We know that uh, there was the Paris Agreement this year. Uh, the question is, if you're continuing to see this, this, uh, these numbers mounting each year, can this be reversed? Or is it basically at this point it's just tapping on the brakes and it's trying to slow things down? Well, no, this can be reversed. Uh, I think our species only, only responds to problems when they're very imminent. And our species has a lot of ingenuity. We can solve difficult problems. There is no reason we should be pessimistic. We can solve the climate problem. What we have to do is minimize our use of fossil fuels, and we also need to plant more trees, things like this. But I'm sure our species can figure out what to do, how to do it, and then do it to reverse climate change. Let me ask you about El Nino. How much is that contributing to this year? Well, what's happening with El Nino, it's actually greatly diminished now as compared to what it was this time last year. So the El Nino contribution to 2016, the first six months being warmer than all of the previous six months back to 1880, is a very, very small part of that. Uh, and the effect of El Nino is greatly diminished now and will be for the rest of 2016. It, it, will that help uh, contribute in lowering uh, the temperature in a sense? Well, it may or it may not, because the greenhouse gases are continuing to accumulate in the atmosphere. I personally think 2016 stands a very good chance of tying or beating 2015 as the warmest year on record when we go for the next six months. So your overall takeaway, uh, the key is to move on this, on this issue as quickly as possible, I would say, I think. Yes, but to move on the issue in, a, in an organized, systematic way, make progress on it, and I'm sure we can do that. Compton Tucker, thanks so much for your time.